Hey, what's up guys? Zaki here, Mass Pentagon. Welcome back to the channel. Sorry I've been away for two days, no videos. I literally have dehydration, diarrhea, but we're here to talk about the end game contents for Tower of Fantasy. So I beat the story, beat the final boss, kicked that old man's ass. So what's next? So we're, I think the news has been going around, 2.0 is coming, I'll make a video talking about it. They're giving away SSR tickets, they're giving away a lot of things during 2.0s and just also three more characters coming up. And waiting in front of my character right here right now is actually Vera and I'm really excited. And at the end of the stories, I, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but according to my translation based on my little poor Chinese, there's actually going to be another tree or a planet aside from Vera, so I'm very hyped about this. So in these videos, I want to talk about what is the endgame content. So what now? What what happened if I beat the story? So what do you basically do? So we're going to talk about the endgame contents. We're going to go to the daily quest. And then we're going to go to the weekly quest. Alright, so let's go. So what is the first thing? So basically, I recommend people to, when they start playing the game, they are to do the stories. And then the ruins over here. This is what I recommend doing because you want to unlock the gadgets, which is going to help you in the exploration. The story, because you want to do, because at one point of the story, it's going to ask you to wait a hundred of hours before you can proceed with the next quest. So basically, what you want to do at the end game is basically 100% all of the mats, uh, Sing Tao, whatever that is, whatever the rest are. So you, what, what do you do? What do you get? Um, you get like gacha, a black cube to do got more gacha. You get like this to maximize your stats. We'll talk about that later. And then more gadgets, and then a mushroom, which actually gives you unlimited stamina for a while. You get gacha core, like golden nucleus. I, why do they call it nucleus? And you get uniforms. And the last one is basically just a title for maximizing the map 100%. So the last one wasn't really that important, but killing more boss and stuff, I, I wasn't able to finish it. The reason why you want 100% the map is basically you want to do more gacha, getting all the gadgets, as well as uh, if I if I'm not wrong, if you do all of the exploration, getting all of the nucleus, you'll be able to do around five to six PD. Like that's five to six SSR. That's really amazing. So the next point is to basically do the all the side quests. As you can see, that character right there, blue blue quest. I have a lot of them. I've never done. I think some of them actually gives you a a mom piece and stuff like that or maybe outfit i really don't know i i, I really don't know because i've never done any side quests in this game yet I'm, i was saving them for the end game more end game content is basically this is the beginner's handbook and you want to try to finish the beginner's handbook first of all they give a lot of black cube gacha core and stuff like that and also this and this which is very useful in limited limit breaking your equipment so more black cube so these are the things this is this is the reason why you want to do all the beginner's achievement Beginner's Handbook? I don't really know. Now, not to touch so much, but the next thing I want to talk about is Bygone Phantasm. So, what you do in Bygone Phantasm is basically like a Genshin Spiral Abyss, except I think you can climb around 600 floors, according to one of the uh, content creators for Tower of Fantasy. He said that uh, some people climb it all the way up to 600 floors. It's going to give you a lot of black cube as well as these and these, which is very important for maximizing your equipment. You're gonna be needing these to limit break equipment. It's very different from the artifact system, but I'll make a separate video talking about the equipment because they're they're a mess. They're not a mess, but they're, they're actually simple to understand, but except because I'm playing without translation and my Chinese is not so good, so I'm actually having quite a difficulty. Now, next thing is we wanna talk about Apex State, basically the rank it fair PvP. Now, I wanna make a separate video talking about whether this is F2P or not, but in these videos, I want to just talk about uh, if you do a lot of PvP ranking up, you basically get more black cube to do more gacha or purchase some other stuff. I'm not sure if you'll get more nucleus to do more gacha, but uh, in this PvP, all I can tell you is there's going to be meta. Is it F2P friendly? I'll, I'll make another video to talk about it, so make sure you, you subscribe to the channel if you want to know what the PvP system in this game is like. No, nothing much. Uh, I, I recommend people doing the story and then the ruins and all that. But uh, if you finish the stories, basically recommend you guys finish the normal and the and then the hard difficulty for the ruins. They're actually quite difficult because you can only do them solo. And uh, it's actually quite challenging. And I do really, really appreciate it because um, it's fun. It's fun. It's, it's really, it really is fun. Like you want to get your character more stronger before proceeding to the heart. The easy and the normal is really easy, but the heart is hella difficult. Now, if you go or not, if you go over here, this is basically your achievement. Um, yeah, getting more achievement gives you more, you know, gacha pools and stuff like that. And I, I honestly don't know, but it'll be a lot more easier when it comes to global English. Those in the battle, you probably know what you're doing. I don't know. So you uh, clearing your story. And also some side quests does unlock more gacha and this as well for your equipment. I, I say that, that that thing is very important because it limit breaks you and your stats. But we'll we'll talk about that later. 
And then we have the antidote where you know you, you do the spectate thing, the wheel thing, just like Genshin Impact as some scenery, and then you'll get some gacha as well, not so bad, and then uh, I don't think you get some. So you get some black cube from this as well. And over at the missions, I'm not sure, this is basically talking about the side quest, the blue blue quest. I'm not sure some of them give you the purple. I'm not sure what kind of rewards await, but some give you recipes and stuff like that. So exploring the world, doing exploration, doing quests, stuff like that, actually gives you um, resources to limit break your mount. I don't know what they do, but they basically, you know, increase your speed and stuff like that. Or maybe your jump, I, I don't really know. But they also give you black cube. 30, not a lot, but at least you'll be able to do, get very close to doing a gacha, right? So there's a lot of mounts. I, I honestly think there's a vacuum, there's two-legged shit, there's the back to the future, there's a unicorn, and then there's Jack Atlas from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, Harley Daytona, Chocobo, and I don't know what this is. So basically you want to get this stuff to actually limit break your stats so you can see that oh wow if I go 5.5 I'll actually, actually limit break that, that much. But you'll need some GS in order to meet some requirements. You need not only this, also GS. So there's a lot of way to increase your GS. Uh, let's go back to your attributes. So my GS is actually 20k only so not enough to limit break. So how do you increase your GS? Your weapon, your, your weapon chips. Um, we'll talk about this in another video and then we're going to come back down to equipment. So your equipment. Uh, we'll talk about this in another video as well. So increasing your equipment, which is going to have something like the artifact system where some stats are random, and then it, your weapons and your chip as well through some gacha system is going to increase your uh, GS and meeting that requirements to limit break and you're gaining more stats. So maybe until now you get to 7.5, but maybe when 2.0 starts, maybe they'll increase because apparently they said that once 2.0 start, the level cap for is actually level 70 and they're gonna max it all the way up to 80, which uh, more challenging stuff will be coming in the future. All right, let's talk about the weekly first and then I will go to the daily. So basically on the top bar right here, you can see a bunch of chests right here. So this is basically the weekly chest and by doing the daily quest, you'll be able to fill up your weekly quest and by spending your racing system, you'll be able to reach up your weekly quest as well. I'm not sure about this one. I'm, pro I'm probably sure you're not. So basically the first tab and the second tab. So your day uh, around, if you do your weekly around per week, if you max it out, you get around only two pools. And if you do your crew mission, why is it called crew mission? I prefer call it clan. So if you max your, uh, in every daily, right? Every daily, it requires you to give a certain item in the a, in, in a crew. I already gave it. And every every week, if you reach this this amount, you'll be able to get this currency for the clan shop, which is going to help you in, you know, limit breaking your, your stats as well. You also get 50 black kill, which is going to help you in your weekly. And then you got your, uh, with the gacha, and then you got your weekly over here, which is going to give you another 100. So if you have a clan, if you do your weekly and your daily, you get around one pool per week. If you do your weekly every week, you get about two pools. So how much FTP you get? If I'm not mistaken, if I didn't miss anything out, probably only three pulls per week. This is why uh, FTP players gonna be relying a lot on content creators so that they can, whether they wanna save or not, people who play on the channel server, whether they wanna save or not, because in PvP aspect of the game, it does affect, all right? PvP is kinda pay to win if you, like everything is balanced, but just this limited banner problem. So I'll talk about PvP in another video. So you get your daily quest, which gives you one uh, golden nucleus, which is one for, uh, and then three purple nucleus for gacha. Every day, you get to do this shit every day, and all you do is track, and it'll, it'll tell you where the hell you should go to do your stuff. Coming down, uh, we got the joint operation. I highly recommend players to do 0 0.7, just a farm on the legendary. Don't focus, don't waste your materials on the purple one. We'll talk about equipment some other time. We also have Dimension Trial, which helps you in uh, grinding for this your goal. And then also this, this stuff, which is kind of useful as well, because you're going to be using them for different stuff. And we also have the Interstellar Exploration, where uh, it's basically this thing in the map. Where is it? Let me look for it. Yeah, this purple thing, basically uh, you grind for equipment for, to limit break your weapon. This thing is basically the same. You just plant something on the floor. I, for, I think I've already planned one right. Let's just plant one right here. So if no one comes up, up back here and pick it up, then it, when it's able to harvest after 24 hours, I'll be able to get some stuff. If not, then someone else loot it. So that's called Omnium Beacon. Space Time Domain, again, uh, resources for your equipment as well. Basically, they throw you into a random dungeon and it costs like 30 racing per. So you can see all the racing costs right here. Except for joint operation, it works a little bit different. I talk about it in, in uh, videos. Not gonna talk so much because the game hasn't launched yet, alright? 
The game has to launch it, but throw so much thing at you guys, you guys will be like, oh my god, so many things. So when the game launch, we'll probably talk about it, and a bunch of content creators will probably gonna talk about it, and you'll be able to catch up with us as well. Now, I think we covered Bygone Phantasm, which is the Spiral Beast APAC list, which is the PvP, you know, doing more PvP, get, getting more crystals to do more, black kill more to more gacha. Frontier Clash, you think, I think you can do three times a day to get legendary equipment. They're like a wave system where slowly enemies come with a wave. The, you got the White Reef where basically you had to destroy some target and then destroy a boss. A chance to get legendary chips and uh, gacha chips. You can do them three times a day. or Is it a week or a day? I'm not sure. I think it's, it's a day. Wormhole, you can also get gacha from here. You can climb different things and they get resets I think in about two days. I have never done it yet so I better be doing them. So there's a level. So at level 50, level 60, level 70 unlock. And then you got your raid. The reason why you want to do your raid is because our raid resets weekly. The left one is very tanky, the right one is actually fighting two nemesis, and the middle one is probably the easiest one. Now, all this has a shop, alright? So for the raid one, you actually farm for a crest. We will talk about the equipment later. And then uh, a lot of them give them a lot of things, like you want to use them to buy those limit breaking things. This is basically for equipment, we'll talk about it later. And then uh, the clan, I recommend getting the clan if you do the clan mission, get this so that you can limit break faster. And then uh, nothing else. All these are events and all these are mini games, which I don't want to touch so much. I probably missed out a point or two. And basically, the end game is just that getting stronger, slowly farming, experience everything by yourself. And is it boring? Well, yeah, it, it, it does feel boring, but seeing your character grow doesn't feel boring. I don't know how to put it, uh, Tower Fantasy might not be a game for everyone, but again, it's an MMO gacha RPG, so a lot of people that just prefer MMO. Might get turned off and maybe just look forward for blue protocol. What can I say? I might miss a lot of points, but I'm again massive Pendragon and I try to draw as many points as I can because there's actually a lot of massive things to talk about. And if I throw everything at you, maybe you won't be able to digest. So this is it. Um, Tower of Fantasy at the end game is just do your daily and that's it. Wait for I'm waiting for 2.0. Thank you all so much for watching and again, hey, it's just game channel.